How's it going guys, Chris here and welcome to my tutorial on how to create the fur effect with Sonic the Hedgehog. Today's tutorial is going to be just me going through what brushes I used and how I created this effect. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's say we start with a blank canvas. When you when you open up Pro Procreate, um, you do normally get like an A4 background, I believe. For me, I set myself a custom background uh, and I will do another tutorial on how to set custom backgrounds in Procreate. But for this one, I done a square, which is basically for Instagram. Now, once you've got your canvas, you import your image. Now to import the image, you press the spanner sign or the rent sign, depending where you're from. Click on insert photo and then go to where your images are, wherever you've saved it. And then we'll just select my painting. You select that and there we go. Now this is a older painting. So that's just basically how you get it in. So if we just uh, remove that layer, because I've already pre-imported them into the layers there. So this is the image I started with. And then this is the image I ended up with. So how did I go from this to this? Now, in order to go from that, you need to create a map or a stencil of the actual piece. So I will quickly show you how, how I created that stencil. Stencil wise, for me, I use the technical pencil, which is under the sketching tab. And normally I use a blue colored pencil, but because Sonic is blue, we're gonna go with red. So once we've done that, I'll select the size, select a new layer. And then it's just a case of drawing a map around Sonic. Now I'm doing this quite loose, just so you get a bit of an idea of what I do. Um, I find, first of all, just kind of getting the basic shapes of the piece in place first. And then once I've done all the basic shapes, I'll go in and put all the detail. But as long as you've got like your basic shapes, first of all, and like your form and where all your shadows are placed, you're good to go. So once you have done that, you will be left with your stencil. So I will just crack on doing the stencil now while uh, while you watch. Okay, so now we've finished the stencil, you're left with, if I remove the layer, a red outline. Now for me, I like to draw the stencil in red, but when I'm actually coloring, I like to convert that to black. So to do that, you go to kind of your magic one button there, head on to hue and saturation tab, reduce the saturation and the brightness all the way down. So your line work is then black. Also what I like to do, and again, you know, you don't really have to use the technical pencil. You can use an ink pen, whatever you're comfortable with for getting that line work. I'll duplicate it and then merge those layers down and that gives me a nice darker line so i will duplicate it one more time and then drop down and then create another new layer now this is where i will go and start my painting so initially what i do is i start a base coat but before we do that we need to work out what our color palette is going to be so for color palette there are various ways you can do it you can either get your image up and use the selection tool and kind of get your colors to be, oops, excuse me, mess that up, get your colors to be more accurate. Um, and you can select them from the image. For me, I tend to do them by eye. So I will kind of go to the blue tab, I'll find the blue that I like, which is say like a mid blue, and that is what I'll use. I'll select an airbrush. Now there's two ways you can do this palette. Um, one way is you can either do that and create a custom palette. So add, you got your untitled palette, change the name to Sonic. And this is where you can then apply your colors. So let's have a look. Now you can also use your color picker, either the disc, classic, harmony, value or palettes. I, once I've set my palette up, I like to go to classic, so from there, I will put my mid-tone in my palette there. Then I will drop it down a bit, go darker. Drop it down a bit, go darker again. And drop it down with black. And the same applies for going further up. And I'll move over to the white. 
So I've got a nice range of colors. What I also do is I will select some different blues and I will back down to there. Just because there's different types of blue in the image. So that is how I create my color palette for Sonic. I like to keep it simple. Just go from dark to light blue. Okay, so once I've set my palette and I've got my colors and everything, and I've moved that image into the right place, I will start coloring in. So base layer, it's just a case of using the airbrush. And kind of marking it in just very, very loosely. Um, I'm not paying too much attention to all the detail yet. This is more to kind of get the the shape of piece. And I find this helps when you're coloring in and doing the proper detail, when you've got that kind of pre-shaded form, if you will. where I'll start switching the blue from the darker blue down into the more kind of tealy blues. I like the blues. And like I said, don't worry if you go outside the lines. This is just rough. And everything can be altered later when you actually do the shading. So we've got our rough kind of shape. And now I'm just going to go and rub out a few areas, just to kind of neaten it up. And there we go, that's the base coat done. So now from this, I'll select a new layer. Let's zoom right in so we can kind of see where we're going with it. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. Now to create the fur effect, you want to be getting your painting brush which is the acrylic one going straight back to your dark blue and now with the painting style side of things actually go to black first with the painting side of things go from dark to light i will set my opacity on the side my brush opacity i will drop that down to around about 60 mm, ish percent and the, the brush size is set up let's have a look see if how this works okay so a bit more undo that so we'll do a bit of a bigger brush first and what we're going to do is we're just going to loosely do some brush strokes kind of following the shape of Sonic's fur. So you do them quite light, make sure they overlap each other. For this I'm just going to concentrate on this one area, this uh, the area just so for this I'm just going to concentrate on the area by the eye. And you just keep building up. If you go a little bit too dark, just make sure you undo that. You don't want to be going too dark straight away. You just want to be building up those layers. I'm just going to crack on and um, do this one, do the, all the dark layers first. Um, what I also do is once I kind of got something that I'm happy with, with the larger, with the larger sized brush, I'll start dropping the brush size down. But as you can see, the more I'm going, the more it's kind of, you're getting that effect. So, so you can see more of how it's coming together. I'm just going to remove this layer here. This, uh, this base coat layer and also take away the outline so we're just concentrating firmly on the hair effect okay so let me just crack on with this again like I said it's just a case of small 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 strokes drop that down size, drop the size of the brush down Go in and get some more, more 
more strokes. And you can darken it up. This is um once you kind of got a, a, an overall base with the darker shade, you can start kind of giving a bit more form and just make sure it's darker in certain areas. Uh, the only thing like this is a really awesome effect to do. Um, if there are faster ways of doing this, please put a comment below and let me know. But for me, this seems to be the best way that I've figured out and discovered with all the brushes to do a fur effect. Like I, I've had a play about with all the brushes. Um, yeah, and this is the best one. Like even the one that like the hairbrush that comes with the the program, you're not gonna get this kind of effect with it. Okay. Okay. Again, build up those layers. Go from this is essentially like a I would call this like a, a underpainting for the overall fur. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all this black done. Uh, and then we'll get cracking with the blue. Okay, so we've got our base kind of fur effect there. And if I re put that layer in, you can kind of already see that with the blue underneath it, it is already giving that kind of nice effect so let's get rid of that layer again just so you can kind of see what i'm doing so from there now i will create a new layer and this is where i start introducing color so we go with the dark blue and again you work from dark to light so it's just straight up exact same process of what i just did with the black just layer it on top This, you know, when it comes to creating fur effect, it is all about patience and time. It is time consuming. Um, I do see a lot of people online uh, on a lot of different groups. And I feel like everybody is kind of looking for that one kind of brush that will speed things up for them. Um, coming from uh, a background of tattooing where I have to just do everything with a tattoo needle and there's no kind of brush that will speed up my process. I always find like the technique uh, will outdo brush, if that makes sense, when it comes to things like Procreate. So yes, you will get really cool effects with certain brushes. And yeah, it may increase and speed up your workflow, but ultimately time and patience, I feel are the ones that pay off the most. So I'm just gonna crack on again with this. Like I said, it's very time consuming. Uh, so I'm just gonna crack on with this now. And um, once that's done, you can watch it and uh, I'll go on to the other, other shades of blue. Okay, so I'm happy with that darker blue is looking. Um, and with the under shading or the base color underneath is starting to come together really nice. I'm going to delete that layer again. Now, like I said, we've just uh, established that we're happy with the way it's looking. And it's looking pretty cool when you put the base coat underneath it. Now, this is literally the exact same process for every kind of color. Um, so rather than me talking through every single shade of blue, I'm just going to go ahead and do them and then show you how I kind of finish that off. So let's uh, get cracking with that. With the sonic piece, the way I do the brush strokes, it's just a case of building up the layers. It is just small, steady strokes in the direction that you want to go to get that effect. 
So yeah, like I said, it's just a case of building up those layers to get that fur effect. And you know, the more time you spend on it, obviously the better the outcome is going to be. Okay, so don't be afraid to kind of go back in with some darker shades when you're kind of working on this piece. I'm going to put lighter shades there, but I noticed that I didn't put any... I'm pointing, right, and I realize I'm doing a screen capture. So I'm putting lighter shades. Um, there's a lighter shade on the rim of Sonic's face, and I realized that uh, I hadn't shaded that part in. So I'm going to put some undershading there. Ready to put the light shade on. Like I said, building up those layers, pop a new layer there, and start coming down into the lighter blues now. The really, really light blues. So we'll go with the really light blue. We'll start building on top. You know, I put those layers in, or I put that undershading in, it's just going to go straight away anyway. And we'll get with a smaller brush now and start bringing in more detail. You know, that's looking with oh. You know what I mean? It's just building up that kind of weird effect. And I think with the undercoat, that is what really makes the difference. So, from there now, I think I'm ready to start bringing in the really, really light blues, which is almost white. And get with a smaller brush again, and just start bringing those layers in. Feathering out edges to get that. I think it's called the rim light, I believe. And just that work in that edge. So once you've got like your basic form of the way you want the shape of the fur, this is where you start really sculpting the kind of details in on the shape. So there. Now this is where like, I know I say you go from dark to light, but this is I think the part of the, the process where I kind of am mixing, I'm going back and forth between dark and light, big and small size brushes, just to really get that kind of effect. And you know, this works with the same with um, doing color, black and gray, same principle, get that base coat in. So for me, I use the base coat to get the form, so it's kind of there. And yeah. And you just keep working that in. You can maybe come over here and start bringing a couple of lighter flex in. You come over here on the darker area and get some lighter flex. It is. So that rim light on the edge of the face, you want to be getting yourself the white and then drop your brush size, brush size down to about one to two percent. And again, it's the exact same principle as everything else we've just done with the brush strokes. Layer it in softly, following the shape of the hair. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's here. And you can bring the white through the rest of the piece as well. Just give extra kind of highlights on other strands to give it more of a fair effect. So mostly the white's going to be used for the kind of rim light on the edge of Sonic's face. Get your really, really light white and just layer that white in as you're going along. Now, when it comes to the actual finishing the edging of the whites, I actually use the airbrush to do that. So what we'll do is once I've so got to where I want to be, we'll go back in with another blue there. And so I've got where I want to be with this. So before I go with the final whites, I'll go back into the black and I will just, just do a few more licks. With the black. black a few more flicks of the black just to kind of give the edge coming from the dark part no the dark shadow excuse my poor terminology 
Um, so coming from the dark shadow areas, I would just go back in with the black airbrush on top of everything and just kind of give it a bit more texture coming out. Now, I apologize if you hear any background noise. This is being recorded in my living room. My partner and daughter are upstairs playing and texting me and there are people walking past so if there's any background noise i apologize so yeah we just build up the layers of the dark just to kind of try and get more texture and try and get like you know the extra ruffles and the shape of sonic's fur in now this overall effect the longer you spend on it, the better it will look. Generally, though, this is how I created the Sonic fur effect. Let me just make that brush a bit bigger. And as I said earlier on, just change the size of the brush and small strokes backwards and forwards going in the shape and the following the flow of Sonic's fur every now and then just kind of kinking it out a little bit so a couple of stray hairs so it's not all completely uniformed and let's just say we'll leave that oh, too big let me just go back and darken that ah, not too big there darken this up a little bit on top of everything that I've done. We like said it is all trial and error. So to finish this piece off, we will go white airbrush. Oop, get your soft airbrush. Drop it right down. And this is where I will just get those really fine, fine hairs. We'll get those really fine hairs. Also, if you're any tippy toe in the background, that is my dog. Um, once again, I apologize. I normally film a lot of my videos uh, when I'm in work, where it's a lot quieter and there's no distractions of dogs and, and whatnot. And obviously due to the lockdown, not able to do that so you just i reason why i use the airbrush for this is just because you can get like really sharp looking hairs and it's the exact same principle as what i'm doing with the, the acrylic brush but just with the airbrush building up those layers the opacity down and just random strands There. Go in. This, you know, this is a lot of patience when it comes to doing, I think, certain drawings, like when it comes to like realism and stuff, it is a lot of patience. Um, you know, I do see a lot of people online where they've kind of spent only a few hours on a piece and they kind of get disheartened and they want to give up because they're not getting the effect that they want. Um, just as an example, I'll, I'll post a picture up now. Um, the Tony Stark piece I did took me 30, about 33 hours, 54 minutes to be precise. So let's just say 34 hours worth of painting. So it's all about just taking your time, persevering, and just making sure you get the outcome that you want back with the airbrush sorry back with your uh, acrylic brush let's just oh is that the right one i apologize no i have not picked the right one artistic back with the acrylic brush so back with the acrylic brush just getting in some of the layers there like i said it is literally a case of 
just working it in and building and building the layers one final piece that i like to do with this and i've done it with the sonic uh original sonic paint and i done so we'll get the black i'll go back into the airbrush and i will just really kind of like Get those shadows in. We've done that. Oh, no, no. And then move it all out. Well, my dogs do not want to uh, let me go in peace. I can hear my one howling upstairs. I don't know if you can if it's picking that up on the microphone. If it's not, I just sound like I'm complaining about a dog for no reason. So use the airbrush, move it all out. Now again, I probably do my paintings a lot more backwards to some artists. Um I will actually complete mine in sections rather than kind of doing it all like layering all like i'll layer the base i'll layer the base and then i'll just concentrate on section by section so i'll get all my layers concentrate on like say this bit there or realistically when i was doing the actual piece i will concentrate on the entire blue section once i've done all that blue and it's done and finished i will merge all the layers together so but for now for this we're just working on these layers so i'm rubbing out the background a little bit just to leave that kind of Rubbing out the background a little bit just to leave the white is looking out and that is ready so i can put the background in now the background you can do whatever color you want but i feel like the background does is what gives it that nice effect we get the soft airbrush and then we'll add that in and i feel that the combination of the kind of dark background against the the white is what really kind of sets this off. One thing I feel like sets off a, a, a good piece is having that nice contrast and it makes it a nice impact piece. Now for this, it is literally just a case of using a soft airbrush and really loosely kind of shading it in. And that is how you get the Sonic fur effect. Or well, you can use that fur effect on any piece that you do. This was used in Sonic, so if you do the entire piece, then hopefully it will end up looking like this. As you can see, in the overall, you know, in the finished piece, there's a lot more that's gone into it in comparison to what I've done. And there you have it. That is basically how I do the fur effect on my Sonic painting, and it can be translated over to other paintings also. So with enough time on your hands, you will end up using those techniques and you will end up creating a really cool Sonic the Hedgehog. Now this image can be found on Google. Have a look and find an image. If you want to recreate this, I would love to see your kind of uh, your versions or I would love to see any paintings that you've done using this technique. So feel free to tag me on Instagram. I am at Chris Harrison Tattoo or just leave a comment below with a link to your Instagram and I'll go check it out. Also, I'm on one of the Procreate groups. So if you're if you're on there and you've seen my stuff on there, feel free to post your stuff on there and tag me in it. Um, but yeah. That is it. If there's any questions or anything you feel like I haven't kind of covered in this tutorial, drop a comment below and I'll get back to you. Um, this is my first tutorial that I've done when it comes to drawing, so I apologize if I'm a bit, you know, all over the shop. Uh, I will look to do more and I will hopefully try and get better. Maybe the next one I will look at doing Sonic's Eye. Because a few people have commented on how much they like Sonic's Eye. So I will look at doing uh, maybe his eye in the next tutorial. Anyway, thanks for watching and um, see you in the next one. Take it easy.